Hello, and welcome to the Green Island Podcast. I'm Bernard Sheehan, uh, co-author of the novel Hard Border. And on the other line with me is my co-author, uh, James Sheehan. Um, Hard Border is available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And as the name suggests, it's a novel set in Ireland around the time of Brexit. And it is not quiet, man. This is a little bit more uh, realistic and drawn from what we saw and, uh, you know, stories we'd heard around the time of uh, Brexit and really modern day Ireland. So um, it's, it, it, we really hope that you will purchase it and enjoy it. And we've got a lot more stories to tell. This podcast will similarly uh, discuss uh, the current Ireland and from our perspective as first generation Americans and Irish expats. And but today we're going to keep it light and really talk about Christmas in Ireland and what that is like and that experience again uh, from the standpoint of a of a you know really American. So, James, thanks for taking the time. No, my pleasure. Thanks for arranging it. And yeah, so the book is yeah is at uh, Amazon and Barnes and Noble, and it's uh it's a Christmas gift because it's marked down fifty percent uh, just to start getting it out there, and we're pretty pleased. We're starting to get sales and. Uh, you know, I think people will really like it. And, uh, you know, chapter, it's pretty much set around uh, the Christmas season. That's right. Uh, pre pre uh, COVID. Uh, it's only a four, like a span of four months. Uh, you know, the book spans uh, across the 300 pages. It's a quick read and it's pretty entertaining. And, uh, you know, so we're pretty happy with it. But yeah, the Christmas season in Ireland is definitely a nice one. Um, and it's, uh, you know, not all bad in Ireland, uh, when it comes to the Christmas season. Right. And it, <laughs> it's good just to give the American people that are hardworking that go back to, uh, you know, work on New Year, uh, 26th or 27th. I mean, in Ireland, it's, it closes down almost on December 12th, and right. then it opens up in January 12th. So they got a good bit of time there. And uh, it's good just to kind of um, give you a kind of an insight of uh, Christmas in Ireland, and mainly Europe, you know, which is quite relaxed and, you know, family oriented. And uh, it's a it's a lovely time. It's, uh, they don't have the snow, but they sometimes do, but they sure have the rain. And it's, it's a uh, Quite a degree is colder than uh, for people who, you know, uh, haven't experienced it to the point where it's far colder than when it's snowing. So it's uh, but it's uh, definitely a homely environment and uh, the fires are always burning and the whiskey's always pouring. Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, you mentioned that it closes down kind of around uh, the 12th or 15th because I had been over um, with business and we typically had Christmas parties around that time. And that's pretty early from an American perspective. You tend to have them maybe around the 20th or so you know, over here. But, uh, I, and after that party, that would more or less be it for me. And I would come back to the States. So I was never really in Ireland for Christmas the way you had been for a number of years. So uh, I guess, what is that like when things start to slow down? Is it, is it kind of like, August 1st, you know, where everything just shuts down or is it more of a gradual kind of people just disappear or when, you know, how does that, uh, that progression kind of happen, you know, as the, as the month of December rolls on? Uh, it really is, um, more or less closing down like August for the American people. Um, you know, because it's so socialized and a lot of the government kind of budgets and all that are perfected in November. And so I kind of always say you really for a business in Europe, and that's probably why their GDP is a fraction of America, because you only have really the window of September to November to get your deal done. Yeah. Uh, because the rest of the year, people are just taking vacations um, at different times. So it's hard to get the team together to close off. So you might get a deal in June or something like that. But mainly, everybody strives to get that deal done before Christmas. And then you either relax or you strategize over Christmas because you got a like a month to burn. Uh, but roughly, you know, everybody's kind of doing their budgets and getting it all done and doing those deals kind of and then, you know, up until December 1st, and then maybe, you know, it might leak over uh, to the 7th or 12th. But by that time, people are, you know, before, you know, the Celtic Tiger or whatnot, it was party time. Like, I knew, uh, you know, we worked with uh, big companies, and especially like the likes of Siemens. And, you know, my sales guy, you know, they were bringing guys out like every night. And it's a full party. Like, uh, we were, he was almost booking me in early, because like, hey, I gotta, you know, (laughs) let's have a good time. Because by the time to, you know, the 12th rolls around, I'm pretty much smashed. I mean, I've been drinking every night. Now, I don't know the extent of that as of today. 
but that was kind of, um, you know, people are just easing into it or closing off deals until pretty much December 12th. And then it's just, you know, la di da until yeah. uh, Christmas. So it's a real slow, um, you know, kind of just relaxing Christmas where they're, you know, going to the pubs or they're going shopping or, you know, they're doing some business, but it's not, uh, things have to be done by November 30th or you're kind of, uh, or at least kind of the 15th of December, your goose is cooked. Yeah. Uh, really because January, December 15th to January 15th, you're not, even if you want to get the deal done and it leaks to that point, um, they're not ramping back up until like, you know, January 15th. So your deal is not being done until 15th of February, 15th of March, you know, it's just the way it works. It's a, and by God, you know, and then there's probably one or two vacations that people are taking in between that to kind of, mm -hmm. because they take a month off. So they need a few more vacations to kind of get back into the swing of things, you know? Uh, and that's the benefit of uh, having six, eight weeks of vacation time in Europe. They really do like it and they do use it. And you Ryanair flights and a uh, hundred bucks to any place in Europe. Uh, you know, and they they do toddle off to Spain for the sun after the the cold winter in Ireland, which is you know. But again, it's quite comforting. It's a lot of fi the fires are always burning, the drinks are always pouring, the laughing is going on. But you know, and that's that's Ireland up to it. And just a caveat, like um, you know, I spent we'll say twenty years in Ireland, but until I got married, which was in twenty twenty, to an expat as well from Australia. Um, you know, I made a mission to get home. I mean, I think I was one time where I was snowed in and I was almost forced to stay in Ireland for Christmas. But until I married, got married in the, tw uh, you know, June 2020, I spent that Christmas actually in Ireland or sorry, 2019. Uh, I spent that Christmas in Ireland because my wife's uh, sister was there. And we'd say, oh, it's our last Christmas. Let's just spend it here because I would mm -hmm. always go back to the States. And, uh, you know, but until that, I mean, I was... Um, you know, because it closes down at December 12th and, uh, you know, you could just uh, want to just get back to America where it's kind of uh, pumping and well, that getting was, going. So that's what I was going to ask you, though, like um, because in August, once that that hits and people start going on holiday, it's not like the U.S. where they're on holiday, but they're checking their messages and odd time they'll call you back or, you know, even when I had vacation here a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was, uh, I was by the pool, the phone rang, I recognized who it was and I took the call, but in Europe, that is not going to happen if for the summer holidays. And we'll be talking about that when we get to August, but is it the same way at Christmas, like December 15th and people don't even answer the phones? I think you were saying like, you know what, we can strategize. Maybe we're out partying or talking and stuff and you, you're still meeting up with people or is that it? We'll talk to you again in January. It's pretty much that's it. I mean, you could have kind of a loose text here and there, but there's no engagement. I yeah. mean, the law firms are closing down. They're having their Christmas parties. Um, you know, it's it's just everything's closing the accountancy firm. So pens are down and no one really wants to think about it because usually these guys, they're not invested. I mean, they're right. it's not their projects. They're they're just the uh, the pens are down for them, so it's hard to get anything moving after again November thirtieth. But again, it does leak, so you buy those two two weeks in December to finish off that deal. But after the fifteenth of December, it's you know there might be a few kind of things that people are just cleaning up, but there's no significant. And if you text them, you'll be lucky to get a text back in a couple of days. Yeah. And that's the difference between the American thing because I have never had really a vacation. I mean, because it's project by project and you're always on the line. I mean, I might not call you back on Christmas, but I'm sure calling you back the day after or the day before. I mean, so it's uh. It, it, it's a different mentality and they, they uh, live to vacation rather than, or however it is, it's uh, they live to work or work to live and we live to work, you know, yeah. or we did. And it's uh, I just, I, I always check my phone. I'm always on. And uh, that's just how I feel comfortable doing it. You know? Well, that's the thing you'd mentioned too, about people hopping on uh, cheap Ryanair flights and uh, heading out of town, but it seems like Christmas would be more, Hey, we're gonna stay. We're you know we're gonna stay at home, like you say, light the fire, uh, pour some drinks, and uh, just have just have some conversation. You know that's that's a big part of the the culture too. When it gets to be cold and wet, let's just get the fire going and uh, you know sit around and chat. 
but pretty much you know, i mean but you still have the golfers are out there because it's only wet it's just you know so they are they are still golfing yeah. minimally but you can't stop the good golfers in ireland but that's virtually it it's it's actually quite boring um it's okay. nice but like you could do one or two or three days of it but lingering around the house for seven 14 days is just mind-blowing to me i need to go somewhere i need to do something i'm off to you know wherever and that's why i was just like i would head tail back to america where it's like you know i have two four three weeks of just non-stop because you're meeting friends that you haven't seen or whatever so i'm moving where it's like they're just going back to their hometowns and the irish are very much home birds uh, you know, they do go back to Cork or, you know, even, you know, the Midlands or Galway. And they're just, you know, going to the pubs and having a good time. And, I, you know, it works for them. And, I, you know, after Christmas, it's whether they do do that, do that vacation. But usually they don't. They still just stick around Ireland mm -hmm. where most Americans are like, hey, it's the 26th, 27th. I'm going to head down to Florida. Or I'm going to, you know, go so, go skiing or whatever they they usually do hang around and it's like, well, I'm going to go on vacation in February, you know, right. to Spain uh, or March. And it's like, I'm going to use up another week or two because uh, like, you know, I was on vacation for three or four weeks around the house and I'm going back to work, but I, I have that lethargic feeling. I'm going to need a, a, a vacation for after my vacation, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that's really how it works. And uh, so it's a hard, it's a hard to get going. And that's, uh, as you can imagine, why, you know, Europe is not as economically productive as America, where like, yeah, you could, you know, you can get Christmas Eve or Christmas Day off and get back to get back to it, you know, or or even St. Stephen's Day for and for the Americans, that's the day after Christmas in UK. That's called Boxing Day. Mm -hmm. I still don't understand, understand, I guess, why it's called Boxing Day. Maybe there's big fights that day or I don't know. But, no, there's a different um, reason, but we can get into that. Uh, yeah. You know, okay. uh, it's a uh, it, there's an explanation there. Um, On the 26th of December, St. Stephen's Day in the Christian calendar, people in America go back to work. But in Britain, Canada, Australia and New Zealand, they don't. In these countries, the 26th of December is a public holiday. It is called Boxing Day. This name has two possible origins. Some say it has this name because in the past, English masters gave their servants a box with small presents or money on the 26th of December. Others say it has this name because churches had boxes for the poor. People put money in these boxes and the churches opened them on the 26th of December and gave the money to the poor. from our perspective we spent a lot of our formative years in ireland really during the summertime you know uh when we were before you know we before we went back to school and that sort of thing and you had super long days um because it was the, the middle of summer and i think people forget really how far north ireland is and you have really long days during the summer we're recording this on uh uh, December 23rd and two days ago was the shortest uh, day of the year. So how does that play in when, in your experience with just being dark for so long into the morning and then late afternoon and getting dark again? And that's a, with the a cloud cover and everything, that's a dark, dark, you know, uh, it's like pitch black outside. Did that play in at all to the Christmas season? Oh, big time. I mean, it really does. It's uh, I mean, if you look at it on a map, it's up there, like uh, up above Newfoundland in Canada. I mean, it's it's dark, it's wet and it's chill to the bone. Uh, it's not a joke. It's like I prefer it snowing because it's snowing. You can brush off You're damp. It's damp a lot. And that's why the fires are always blazing. Uh, now, the houses are very well insulated to the point where I almost have, have to keep my windows open all the time because I just can't because it's almost suffocating. They build their houses very, very well. Uh, and I was uh, including their apartment complexes and I was on the top or second to top floor and the heat rises. And it was just mm -hmm. like I kept my apartment doors open or my like sliding doors open, windows open because it's just so suffocatingly insulated. But they like they need it because it's yeah. so damp and it's so dark and it gets dark like 4 p.m. And it's like um, it's getting uh, light in the morning at maybe nine or eight 
So like you're not getting that much of a, a time for the light and then with the rain and it's, you know, it's constantly raining, it's cold. Um, and, but it, it kind of creates an atmosphere of kind of let's snug off next to the fire, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that kind of is a different atmosphere and that's what they're, what they're used to. And it's a lounging kind of around the fire for the, the couple the days or the weeks that the Christmas holiday brings. But, uh, that kind of starts mid November, November and it's, uh, yeah, it's it's breathtakingly cold. I mean, you know how it is with uh, yeah. Chicago winters or whatever. At least it's a crisp, you know, it's clean, cold to a degree. This is a damp, you know, to chill to your bones kind of uh, cold. And if you're caught on the rain, which everybody is, and, you know, I used to go to um, through umbrellas once a week. I'd buy them cheap because the wind would kill it or I'd yeah. leave it in somewhere. And that's just the story of Ireland. Well, in the U.S. too, if it's snowing, um, you've got that snow as kind of something of an insulator, but it's also reflective so that you get the sun or the light from the moon, you get it off of the snow. So it's not pitch black when there's snow out versus when it's cold and damp and it's just, and you've got that cloud cover. It's, it's just hard to deal with, but, you know, I guess that's, like you say, it's an excuse to stay by the fire, either have uh, something to drink or even just get the kettle on, that sort of thing. But I guess with Christmas... Yeah, have their you know, cup of tea. They yeah. love their cup of teas, and, yeah, or like. the mainly their cup of teas. And yeah. uh, it's a it's an easy way to just uh, lounge into it. They're going to watch their rugby, they're going to watch their golf, um, you know, and uh, the Christmas movies. And it's quite a good family atmosphere, though, because, again, they're very much home birds. So they go home. To, you know, maybe they all work in Dublin, but they definitely migrate back home for the holiday season. And that's the thing, too, with the states you said uh, about traveling around. Oftentimes you've got family who are all around scattered. Not everybody's back in the home uh, state, even much less the hometown. So it's uh, it's it's definitely there's a lot more travel here, um, you know, on the U.S. side by necessity. But, well, uh, that's you know, why, like, um, St. Stephen's Day, the day after, is kind of like the biggest drinking day of the year. It's almost okay. like our day before Thanksgiving in Chicago or in the U.S., you know, yep. because everybody's coming home for the first time after, you know, uh, together. They're, they do come home for Christmas, and it's the same with, like, the college kids coming home. Thanksgiving's kind of their first time really home, where everybody's home. Right. So let's go to the local pub. Uh, the day before Thanksgiving and like, let's meet everybody that we haven't seen all year. And that's the exact same. And that's why St. Stephen's day, which again is the day after Christmas is more or less the biggest drinking day of the year where it's so big. Usually the pubs are like packed out the door onto the street uh, because it's so big. And it's not like super, like if you could dodge the rain, which usually I've had, you know, my experience is it doesn't really rain all the time. It's a light rain. It's mm -hmm. a, you know, so you can dodge it or maybe it doesn't happen. And it's quite a lovely experience. It's just a bit crisper, but um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, and everybody's merry and on their way. So for Christmas Eve then and Christmas Day is everybody at their house and then St. Stephen's Day is the day that everybody's like, okay, we're going to head out and hit the town. That's pretty much exactly it. That's that's exactly it. Like they're doing and they're doing their own thing up until that point. And then uh, Christmas and then St. Stephen's Day is when they're hitting the town and they're probably going to hit the town then for the rest of the week. Okay. You know, it's it, that's kind of the start. And then yeah. people but that's really the the main one where everybody makes it out because you're home, you know, for the Saturday and Sunday or sorry to, for the Christmas and Christmas Eve. Yeah. And uh, so they need to get out. So what is, you know, can you, again, for our American or international listeners, what's the, uh, what's Christmas Eve like, or what's, or, or Christmas Day? I mean, what uh, are there, is, are there traditions there that are pretty much set in stone? We have to do this on Christmas Eve, or this is definitely something we do every Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Day, now it's, it's this set of traditions or these sorts of things that we do as, uh, as the day progresses. No, surprisingly, it's quite similar to America. I mean, okay. uh, where you would have everybody shopping the last minute. Uh, you know, our tradition was kind of, you know, family and friends gifts the night before to have a like, you know, a quasi party. And then, like you'd say, Santa gifts the next day and like you'd have the 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 lunch or the dinner and uh, at your like three o'clock. And that's kind of it's very, very similar to uh, like that's pretty much universal. 
Uh, yeah, and that's the way it is in Ireland across the board. I mean, um, you know, some people don't do the New Year's Eve uh, tradition. I personally like it because it kind of turns one event into two. Um, but, you know, besides that, it's very straightforward. Everybody's getting up super early to watch the kids open up their presents. And you're into it. And then the, the churchgoers go to church and, uh, you know, the dinner's at two, three, four o'clock. And you you just go in until you, you pretty much are going home. You know, what's for, what's for dinner? What's the traditional dinner? Or what's everybody having? Or are they having different things depending on what house you're at? No, they're all having the turkey and ham because we don't have a Thanksgiving or they don't have a Thanksgiving. So they're not kind of turkeyed out. This is their big chance. And what I was seeing there is like, it was almost like a competition who's making the biggest turkey, you know, <laughs> for the farmers and stuff like that. You know, we have a big turkey. And and even on St. Stephen's Day, like there's um. Ireland's pretty, pretty big with regards to like their hunt, you know, and so like the farmers, the hunt is kind of like a fox hunt. Mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, outside rural Ireland, everybody likes has their horses and they'll do their their hunt. And um, it goes through everybody's like farms and stuff. And the farmers would like have they built make such big turkeys and hams that they would have like sandwiches for people that wanted to stop by, even if it was just like, Oh, there's, there's Johnny's house. I'll go say hello to Johnny and yeah. Johnny or Johnny's mom has sandwiches ready to rock. And that's kind of, you know, hard border kind of goes into that in chapter two and three and four, uh, you know, about that little Christmas tradition, but the hunt is uh, for the rural part of Ireland outside the cities is a pretty big deal. And uh, so they're building the, the farmers are making some pretty big turkeys and uh, you know, for that kind of tradition and it's, but it's everything. It's turkey. It's ham. Um, you, and you got to understand, like outside rural Ireland, they're having big dinners every Sunday. I mean, it's right. it's not turkey. It's like a roast. It's always potatoes. It's always a veg. It's always a few desserts. That's their Sunday. It's a it's a kind of Sunday's a miniature Christmas, really, because you're starting and you're just in the whole day. Uh, and that's but Christmas is more like, OK, you got your gifts. It's more, more merry. Uh, you know, a lot more people are coming over because a lot of people do jump between houses just yep. to visit. So they'll have their dinners at three or four and then they'll go on a tour of kind of I'm going to go over to Johnny's house and have a whiskey and then I'll move on to, you know, uh, Deirdre's house. And they make the rounds because, again, when they all go home, they all have cousins everywhere. Yes. And they all want to go to see their cousins. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're all drinking. They're all having their own kind of thing. And, you know, they get pretty big and it, there's a lot of laughing. And so that's kind of the, where in America, maybe you're just sitting in one place. They will kind of they'll start hopping and going around, uh, you know, and uh, that's kind of it's kind of just uh, the activities they have. And it seems like it works. So and, and as you said, out in the country or kind of the rural areas, um, it's very much a drop in culture, you know, to say I'm passing by, I'm going to go into the house or I'm going to stop by and see what's going on, see what's happening there. And that was the way we grew up and what we saw. And some of that was we had relatives who didn't have a telephone went back uh, in the early uh, kind of 70s, 80s time frame. And uh, so people would just drop by and you would see, you know, headlights coming up the driveway. And it's like, who is this? And you didn't mind who was uh, coming up. So it sounds like Christmas time is really that on steroids where everybody is doing that. Everybody's out and about. And that's the way it goes for at least those couple of days, if not uh, through the week. Pretty much. That's exactly it. They're like, they're all stopping by and it's quite festive and they always have desserts. I mean, they're making like not one dessert, it's four or five you know, and um, a ton of drinks. Drinks are always flowing. Drinks, and they're very, it's very a hospitable season because, you know, like we have all our aunts and uncles there and, you know, you're staying even on the Sunday, if you just the Sunday dinners there, you're, you're not without a, an, an alcoholic beverage in your hand, if that's your thing or, you know, a cup of coffee or a biscuit or whatever it is. So it's always kind of like keeping you fed and there's always starters and, so it's a really quite nice and it's always packed. It's yeah. like, you know, a cousin's coming from every direction. I think that's the benefit of going home um, that you have your cousins are all going home. And, you know, it's very much that tribal thing. And I think I alluded to it in, you know, episode one of the podcast that, you know, it's very still very Ireland is made up of 30 counties and each county is completely different and has their own kind of set of uh, ways they do things to a degree and they all have their family that kind of go back and migrate back to it and so it's quite awesome and then at the and then the 26 it's kind of like okay now we're going down the town and you know uh and go to the disco and or the the club and 
you know, it's kind of, that's what, how, how it sets off. Yeah. Well, you know, that's the thing. It sounds somewhat idyllic, you know, something of like Lord of the Rings, the Shire type of attitude of, you know, just uh, sitting around uh, again, kind of the, uh, smoking the pipe and and those sorts of things back in the day but there is still a big part of that in in the culture but it's it's great that that is still the case um i know we talk a lot about some of the things that are going in ireland that aren't all that great and uh some things that are really good and traditional and fun and wholesome still do exist so we definitely want to touch on that uh you know for the christmas season and remind everybody of that so this has been great, James. But again, think. thinking of that, just in that regard, though, we're talking like this homeliness is in the rural part, and <laughs> that's the part they want to collapse. I mean, they want to kill everybody's cows uh, for the environment, and they want to make everybody a coder. Uh, those, are, those are the values that uh, the man wants to see gone, and Do that's the, those are the right. those are the things they want to. And I mean, I don't think I don't spend the I haven't spent time in Christmas and uh, Christmas time in Dublin particularly. Uh, it was always going out to the country for these sort of events. But I mean, up to a point you would spend in, in Dublin, like just for the shopping and it's all, you know, very festive and great and like, you know, good time. But that homeliness that we just discussed is not, I haven't seen, I don't know about it in Dublin. I only know it in the rural, but the stopping by, I don't think you get that in Dublin. Uh, that's very much a, a kind of a country outside Dublin, yeah. uh, should we say. I, yeah. I'd say Cork is very much like that as well, which is the second biggest city in Ireland and Galway. The stopping by mentality would still be very much alive. and uh, But in Dublin, they're, they're very much more uh, modern or so they would like to portray. And I don't know if that really goes on as much. I mean, it's, it'd be more almost American where it's like, you know, we're going to go over to mom and dad's house and, uh, you know, have the dinner and get on with our lives. But there's no kind of sitting by the fire for two days while people are dropping by on their right. horses, hunting a fox or whatnot, you know, or yeah. going golfing and coming back and et cetera. Well, we want to stick with the happy memories for, for today. <laughs> there's, a, there's more to come where we can get into uh, um, maybe more of the reality. But, you know, this is this has been nice, uh, you know, to think about kind of Christmas, uh, the culture, and again, sitting around the fire, having, uh, having a nice time and a good chat. So maybe we should uh, call it there for today and uh, wish all of our uh, listeners here, uh, uh, as they say in Ireland, a happy Christmas. And uh, thanks for joining us today and more to come. And we'll keep on going from here and uh, continue to talk about uh, modern day Ireland and again, capture a fair amount of that in uh, our Green Island novels and, and in Hard Border specifically. So thanks everyone for hopping on, appreciate it. And we'll talk to you soon, Jay. Thank you very much. All Thank right. you very much and Merry Christmas. Happy Merry Christmas. Talk to you Bye soon. Bye-bye.